I'd like to welcome everybody to the Planning Commission meeting today. And our first item is going to be, let's hear the announcements, please. Before we begin the agenda, the Wichita Sedgwick County Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the Wichita Sedgwick County Board of Zoning Appeals would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this public hearing. For those in attendance, copies of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure, and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby. The Planning Commission's and the BZA's bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning, subdivision, or variance application and his or her representatives to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please share your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the room. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. All speakers at the podium, please remove your face mask before speaking into the microphone. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the Commission and the Board will be retained by the Secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking, but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please provide your contact information to the Planning Department. The Planning Commission and the Board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on all the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be as courteous and concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available from the planning staff. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearings and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to the District Court. Thank you. Um, we'll have roll call now. Yes, sir. Bill Johnson? Yes. Ann Fox is not here. Mr. McKay? Yes. Shane Gross, seat is vacant. Green? Here. Jewel? Here. Blick? Not present. Nix? Foster? Here. Warren? Here. Joe Johnson? Here. Miles? Present. Hartman. Florence. Mr. Florence. Not present. One, two, three, four. I show four. Not present. Ten present. Scott, should we go ahead and announce the ones that have been deferred? Yes. Yes, sir. I think that would be advisable if anybody's here for vacation case 2021 triple zero 48 item 3.1 on the agenda that has been deferred also item 3.2 vacation case 2021 triple zero 49 has also been deferred I believe that's it, isn't it? Yes, Thank sir. You. Okay, let's have approval of the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting of December 2nd. Second. Got a motion, motion to approve by Mr. Hartman, second by Mr. Green. Mr. Any Chairman, discussion? Mr. Chairman, I wasn't here and I and I was here. According, my name's not on it. I was here last time. 
they don't have me being absent. They don't have me being here. So okay. <laughs> it was kind of like the. <laughs> See how so you I, will not, I will abstain. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Yeah, Joe Johnson is saying too. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, the first case, uh, I'm going to go through these and see if we can take any of them on consent. The first one is a subdivision item 2.1, 2021 triple zero forty eight, one step final plaque on Bay Ridge second edition. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Anybody virtual on the commission want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber here want to hear that case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? You can take us on consent. Um, Subdivision 2021-00050. Um, it's the multimedia facility edition. Does anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Take it on consent. The next one is subdivision 2021-00054. Does anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commission members that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the ch ch chamber here want to hear this case? No. Too much to hear zoning. Okay. Yeah. Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Seeing none, we can take that on consent. Do I have a motion? To move. Two, one, two, three. Second. Approved by Commissioner McKay, second by Ms. Commissioner Warren. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, now we're going to move on to the vacation cases. We have one, 3.3, vacation case 2021, 000 050, um, vacation of the West 35-foot setback, located on Lot 1, Sander Edition, located on Southwest Street and McCormick. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? Excuse me, I do want to hear this case. 3.3. Okay, we'll go through... Uh, Additionals 2021 000 51. Um, we're going to have a staff update on that, correct? Sorry, sir, can you restate that? I'm sorry. Do we have a staff update on 4.1? Yes, sir, we do. Yes. Matt, if you could just update them on the status of the Goddard recommendation. Okay. Since yeah. this was deferred, we're just going to get an update so we don't hear the whole case again. Yeah, we deferred this at the last meeting to give Goddard a chance to weigh on in this before it came to the Planning Commission. Uh, it was heard by the City of Goddard's Planning Commission on Monday, and they approved it unanimously. Thank you. With that said, does anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? We'll 
we'll take that on consent. Next one's 4.2, additional 2021-0055, Child Day Care Center. Anybody on the chamber want to hear, or any commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual? Want to hear this case? Take on this on consent. Twenty twenty one triple zero fifty six. I think we're going to hear this case, aren't we? Sir, we do believe that uh, we have a resident who would like to hear this one. Nancy Hill, we understand, would like to hear this case. Hear it then. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I would. Next one's 4.4 conditional use 2021-00057. Now for vehicle sales on LC commercial zone, 31st Street South in Hillside area. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? <laughs> Any of the commissioner virtual want to hear this case? <laughs> Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? We can take that on consent. Uh, condition 4.5. Am I able to say something? Mr. Chairman, uh, it looks like we're getting some some noise or feedback from a Mr. Dominique. And yeah, I. I apologize. I, this is something completely new to us. We were just, we were the owners of the new building. We were just seeing if, if you guys needed us here for anything at all. I just would like to be a part of okay. whatever was going on. So, Mr. Dominique, we're, we're in the process of determining which cases are going by consent, which means that oh. it would be approved without conversation or uh, whether uh, you'll have to be present for that. So please stand by. Absolutely. Sorry about that. Okay, 4.5, conditional case 2021-00059. Um, I think we're going to have some more information on that. Well, sir, um, with this one, there is also a, a BZA variance that's been applied, and the uh, staff have determined that the variant should not go before, so the BZA case should not be heard or determined before this conditional use. However, if the Planning Commission chooses, you may take this conditional use by consent. So anybody on the Chamber or Commission want to hear this case? We have to determine if we approve 4.5 on consent. If we can, then we can take the BZA case later. So they don't want to approve the BZA before this item is approved. Yes, sir. And the clarification, Mr. Nix, is that um, the the variance is a request to not have to do the landscaping around this uh, utility use. So the question is whether or not the utility use will be approved. And if it is, then the landscaping can be considered. But if not, then it may not make sense to take the, the variance case. Anybody on that? Commission want to hear this case. Any commission members virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber here want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Take it on consent. Next case is CUP 2021. Triple zero sixty two. 
and this is a case that we had deferred from last week. Did Dab heard this case and supported it? 6 0, was it? Yes, sir. My understanding is that it was unanimous, and Kathy Morgan is confirming that, yes. Anybody on the chain, a commission want to hear this case? Okay, we're going to hear that case. The next one is zoning 2021-0054. City zone changed from SF5 to TEF3. Hoover and, no, yeah, Hoover and West MacArthur. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commission reversal want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? We'll hear this case. Next one's zoning case 2021 0055. Um, change from SF20 to MF18, 135th Street West. And 13th Street. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioner virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? We'll hear this case. Next one's 4.9. Uh, zoning case 2021-0056. Conditional use of 2021 0058. Change from RR residential to SF20. Conditional use to allow accessory part of neighborhood swimming. Located on 29th Street North and 127th Street East. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Take that on consent. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve items 41, 42, 44, 45, and 49. Second. Second. Got a motion to approve per Mr. Green, second by Mr. Duell. Duell. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Okay. Now I think we should move to the BZA. Okay, we're going to leave, leave the commission meeting and go to the BZA. First item is approve the minutes of December 2nd. Move to approve by Mr. Hartman. Second. Second by Mr. Warren. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the first case is Johnson, Johnson has to abstain. abstain. Joe will have to abstain from that. Right. Next one's BZA 2021 0067. And the applicant and staff are not in agreement on this one. So we'll hear this. Good afternoon. Philip Ziebenbergen with planning staff. Uh, the request for uh, a variance, uh, this application is a request for a variance to waive the screening and landscaping requirements on the north property line and the south property line on a property located at 915 North Hoover. On December 2nd, the Planning Commission recommended approval of a zone change for this property from single family SF5 to MF18, a multifamily residential with a PO that would restrict development to no more than duplexes. If you go to the um, site plan, Paul, the applicant is considering or um, 
anticipating building four duplexes along the north property line and using the existing drive on a property to the north as the access for the parking area for the duplexes. The applicant owns the property to the north and one of the recommendations or one of the conditions of approval in the protective overlay of the zone change was that an access easement be dedicated to protect that access. Because the property to the north is zone TF3 and this one um, is awaiting approval to be MF18, they would be required to have a six foot screening fence as well as landscaping per the applicable, applicable codes um, along the north property line and the south property line. Specifically for the north property line, in order to use that access drive, they would not be able to do their screening or landscaping or to say that backwards. If they're required to use this, the screening and landscaping, they wouldn't be able to use the access drive that they want to. So they're requesting the variance for that purpose on the north end. The south end, they're requesting the variance. If you go to the aerial, you can kind of see it on the site plan here, but the aerial shows it a little bit better. There's the existing driveway for the single family home along the south property line. The south property line already has a six foot screening fence. And so the request was for to waive the screening and landscaping requirements for both the north and south property lanes. So where staff and the applicant, uh, I don't say disagree, but staff disagrees with the request is there's already the space for a screening fence. And so when we determine our staff evaluation of the um, five conditions for a variance, uh, our evaluation said the screening requirement on the south side should not be waived because it's already there. And that way, if this portion of the property is redeveloped in the future from away from the single family home to a duplex development, that screening can be there and not be waived should the fence ever come down. Um, that way, at least the screening can be there. Uh, staff's evaluation of the landscaping um, is in agreement with the applicant's uh, argument that there's really no space. If we go through the site pictures, we can see that. So this is the access drive on the north. This is what the applicant wants to use to access the parking area for the duplexes. And so the north property line is right here. And this is where they um, are requesting not having a screening fence or landscaping to make use of this existing driveway. And these are the, and you can actually see here, this property base has a screening fence screening this duplex from this driveway because this driveway accesses a duplex behind it. Um, so in a sense, there's a little bit of screening there already anyway. Next picture. This is looking at the single family home. Uh, next picture. This is looking at the existing driveway um, south of the single family home. You can see the screening fence that's there. And you can see that there is little to no room to accomplish the screening requirement that would require planting of trees, um, whether shade or ornamental. Uh, and so that's where staff evaluation says that the screening requirement should remain, but the landscaping requirement, there's just really just no space. This is a single family home to the south. This is a single family home right now. If it was redeveloped for duplexes, if it was a TF3 zoning, there wouldn't be the need for landscaping anyway. So our evaluation says that screening and landscaping on the north side should be waived and uh, landscaping alone are waived on the south property line. Keep going on the site pictures. Just give you a character of the area. These are the duplexes to the north. Next picture, please. This is the single family home across the street. Next picture, and this is looking south along Hoover at single family homes as well. So I'm not going to go through each individual point as you can read it in your staff report, but I, I'll just summarize again what I just said of uh, staff evaluation uh, feels that it is, a deficient, it is efficient use of an existing driveway along the north property line to access the parking area, proposed parking area for the duplex development versus requiring the applicant to uh, use more buildable area on the existing lot to provide their own driveway especially since it's under common ownership and there will be an access easement dedicated to protect that access. Um, again, to reiterate that there is just little space for landscaping on the south side, but the fact that there's already an existing six foot screening fence, um, that the screening requirement on the south side not be waived. Um, with that, I can stand for any questions. Any questions of staff? Yes, not. Applicant or agent? Kirk Miller, K. Miller Engineering. I'm the uh, agent. 
And we were fine with the uh, requirement of the, we're, we're fine with the recommendation from staff if this is approved as far as the screening. Any questions, agent? Thank you. Would anyone else in the chamber like to speak on this item? Anybody virtual want to hear speak on this item? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to commission. Move that we approve per staff comments recommendations that the okay. uh, five um, requirements have been met. Approved by Ms. Foster. Who seconded it? Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Next item. BZA 2021-00069. Another landscape deal. Yeah, good afternoon, commissioners. Matt Williams. Um, this is BZA 2021-69. Um, can you move to the aerial picture? Uh, the applicant is requesting a variance to waive landscaping requirements on this property that's zone limited commercial. Um, the property is located on the northwest corner of MacArthur and South Seneca. Um, the property is developed with an electric substation, which was allowed via the conditional use that uh, was just approved a few moments ago. Uh, the applicant is intending to expand this electric substation and enhance it. Uh, there is going to be a masonry wall that's going to be constructed around the site that will act as a sort of screening. But the L Wichita Landscape Ordinance requires a landscape street yard along the south and east frontages of the subject property due to the arterial streets. Uh, the applicant is, believes that these requirements should be waived due to posing a safety risk to the public uh, with the electric substation being there. Uh, staff analysis finds that waiving the landscape requirements would adversely affect the public interest and is against the spirit and intent of the code. The expanded substation pad should still allow space for a landscaped street yard along both street frontages. Uh, the applicant has not explained why the landscaping would pose a risk, uh, but the available space should allow for small shrubs and ornamental trees that would not interfere with the substation. Uh, Wichita's landscape ordinance seeks to protect residential developments from surrounding uses, soften, soften harsh expanses of pavement, and screen undesirable views. With this being located at the intersection of two arterials, um, leaving a blank masonry wall uh, would be detrimental to the area. Uh, should the board determine that all five conditions <coughs> necessary to grant the variance can be found to exist, then it's recommended that the site be developed according to the attached site plan. Uh, let's move through some of these photos. Here's the site plan. You can see the electric substation is expanding a lot to the north and to the west, but along the two street frontages, it's expanding just a few feet to the east and a handful of feet to the south. Next slide. Here's a look at that existing substation. You can see that there is some landscaping there. Um, I will note that there is going to be a new masonry wall that's going to be built all the way around it. Next slide. Here's across the street to the east. This is a commercial property that's vacant right now, and there's a single family house right there as well. Next slide. This is to the south, the zone PUD, but vacant right now. Next slide. Here's to the west. There's a car wash and a warehouse. Next slide. And here's to the north, there's two apartment buildings. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of staff? Seeing none, thank you. Okay. Nope. Answer the staff's uh, assessment is that there's enough room on the east side that to put landscaping without causing any kind of line of sight or uh, clearance problems from for traffic coming in and out of that location. There, Let's see if I have that written down here. There's roughly, if you go to the site plan, <clears throat> there's going to be roughly 60 feet on the south of property. Yeah, for, south, south, and then the like east. Let me see if I can look at my site plan a little bit better. I believe there's between a 10 and 20 foot uh, area for landscaping there on the property. 
We won't have any vision of triangle problems. Uh, you know, we haven't had a traffic engineer look at that, but the, that was not a reason brought up for why there shouldn't be landscaping. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, uh, just you to confirm, you said there's going to be a masonry wall around the entire expanded substation, right? Correct. Okay. Yes, the site plan indicates that it will be around the large hatched area. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you, Matt. Applicant or agent? Good afternoon. Uh, Charlie Brown with PEC. We are representing Kansas Evergy South Incorporated, our electric company, Evergy. Uh, the site plan that you see uh, does show uh, the wall going around the entire hatched area. The issues that Evergy has is on the south, uh, especially large trees and power lines just don't seem to, to mix. They, they spend a lot of money every year trimming trees, uh, tall trees, to avoid any conflict with the power lines. One thing that is not shown on this plan that hasn't been determined fully is the extent of <clears throat> the substation improvements there will be additional poles coming out of the out of the substation to the south. Uh, you you, will, you can see um, if we could get the street view looking at at this. Yeah, you can see the tall power line structure there. Pole. There'll probably be more of those west of that location in the area that's being expanded. So tall trees, uh, we respectfully request that, that we not be required to put any tall shade trees in. And on the ornamentals and, and shrubs, the Evergy people are basically told me that this attracts birds, which attracts snakes, which gets into the power lines, squirrels, whatever. So. Any type of vegetation is a attraction to rodents and other animals that can be a detriment to the substation operation. Uh, there are existing shrubs on the east side of the existing fenced in area. Those are some red leaf barberries. They are totally overgrown with some vines of some type. There are some additional shrubs, uh, similar shrubs on the south side. <clears throat> Uh, but we respect, re, respectfully request that, that the landscaping uh, be waived in this location. Any questions, Agent? Mr. Nix? So I, I'd say you're right as far as tall trees, uh, small ornamental trees. I think I'm going to have to disagree with you. Uh, I think you could use grasses, uh, any norm, any number of different kinds of vegetation to soften the, that FEMSA. Uh, so I'm going to take exception to what you're saying. Any other questions? agree with Mr. Nix in general. I'm sure that Evergy said what you said they said, but I'm not buying it. Um, I will grant that sh tall shade trees would be problematic in this issue, but there are lots of other vegetative op options that could soften that wall for neighbors in the community. And I think I would like to know if after a more detailed plans are developed for this site so we know really where the overhead wires are, 
if you then run into problems meeting the requirements of the landscape ordinance, is it possible at that point to have a further discussion on the issue to see if there's some solution? But to just give a blanket, well, don't bother, I'm not, I don't think that's reasonable in this situation. Any other questions? I've got one. Whoop. Bill? Mr. Hart. Yeah, I'm wondering if they've changed their policy because I've I've done some of these projects in the past when uh, I worked for KG&E and, and uh, we were required to put in landscaping and, and made it work in the past. I'm just wondering why, why now it's not going to work. Several projects in the past have required landscaping. Evergy has complied where absolutely necessary. Uh, their preference and Therefore, this request is, is not to do any. So that's why we're here today. Um, certainly some shrubs or, or minor trees, whatever, could be accommodated. Uh, and I, I, I failed to mention that one of our Evergy folks is online, Chris Meyer. And uh, I would like for him to step in if he feels he needs to on this issue. He's in Topeka, and so he's online remote. Um, otherwise, we'll entertain whatever uh, the board requires. Um, if we eliminate large trees only, uh, I would like to have some guidance on what we do design two. It won't be the regular ordinance, so we're going to have to come to some agreement on what we're going to, how much we're going to be required to do. Yeah, if I could, this is Chris Meyer um, with Evergy in Topeka, um, uh, 818 South Kansas Avenue. I just wanted to comment uh, about our policy. Our policy has always been we uh, we try to avoid. Um, interfering with specifically transmission lines, um, the, the ultimate layout of this substation, as I understand it, will have where we see all those power lines coming in at that one point. Now we'll have probably three different, uh, three separate, um, they call dead end um, or tap in locations along the south wall. And then there's still two more on the north wall. So I just wanted to point out that there's uh, the transmission likes to have a you know a buffer in there where they don't have any tall trees, um, and of course, like Charlie said, we don't like to have the opportunity for animals to uh, um, you know get in and, and muck up the works. But um, so you know we we and we have a we have abided by um, the landscaping. Um, recommendations in the past so we just want to work with you um, we don't um, we don't want to say that's not our policy uh, our, our policy is to is to avoid landscaping um, where possible um, but we will we'll work with you and we and we'll like to make it the uh, least amount of maintenance as possible because these are largely unmanned um, substations they're there may be somebody there once a month, but we don't have water on site and we don't have sewer or anything like that. So um, maintenance of landscaping becomes an issue too. So that's all I've got. Sorry. Thank you. Mr. Warren. I don't know if it's a staff question, but I, I think that we're, we're looking for the middle ground that we want landscaping, but there are certain things that we don't. Does the staff have the, the ability to review recommend uh, requests of the applicant of what kind of landscaping they'd want to do? without bringing it back to us, or does it need to come back to us? Well, our planner, Neil Strahl, usually uh, approves the landscape plans, but according to my research, our ordinance requires one shade tree or two ornamental trees for every 500 feet, but you can substitute 10 shrubs for one shade tree or five shrubs for one ornamental, or ornamental tree, as long as you do not substitute more than one-third of the required trees. So I think that maybe gives a little leniency as to what type of vegetation you have there that gives us some flexibility but I don't think it is going to solve the problem of of the overhead wires but is there anything we as a board can do 
to to enforce part of an ordinance, the landscape ordinance. I, I'm not quite sure the logistics of how this could work. Sure. I, I guess this is Scott Wadle's planning staff. I would just point out that uh, there is quite a bit of flexibility in terms of which types of trees, what species of trees that they wish to plant. And so we're just looking for generally what categories. Is it ornamental or is it a shade tree? So as you heard Matt describe, they don't have to put in a shade tree. They don't even have to put in an ornamental tree. It gives them flexibility about bushes, shrubs, ornamental. So they can choose, and they can choose exactly which trees they want to put in. Now, if you, as a BZA, would find uh, that you want to exempt them from putting in tall trees, uh, shade trees, uh, uh, uniformly as part of this, uh, you can, f I guess you could find that the five conditions exist to provide a variance from a requirement to put in shade trees. Um, or you could, you could ratchet that down as, as far as you feel is comfortable. Um, hopefully that's a good overview and it provides you with how either the middle ground that's already provided or you can also introduce your own middle ground if you like by finding the five factors. I know this much about landscaping. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm wanted to pass that pass that ball off to somebody. Would the staff feel comfortable with having that position? We, we are. We have a planner who does those reviews. Um, you know, and has done those in the past. So I'll, I would indicate that. I've worked for a landscape architecture firm here in town for 25 years, so I actually do know a little about landscaping. There are columnar trees, there are small trees, there are large shrubs. I think this is doable, low maintenance, minimal snakes and squirrels. <laughs> um, Thank you. It's going to have to be done carefully, but I think it's totally doable, and I think for the sake of the neighbors and the neighborhood, uh, I would, uh, would ask that we not approve the variance, or if we approve it, we approve it with the exception of uh, not requiring shade trees as opposed to ornamental trees, but otherwise requiring that the landscape ordinance be met. Um, Mr. Nix. I'm going to agree with Ms. Foster. I mean, <clears throat> you could set a, a limit on the height. I mean, we get confused maybe sometimes between ornamental trees and small shade trees. I, you could call them a shade tree, I suppose. Uh, there's overlap, you're sort yes. of splitting hairs, but uh, as far as birds and that sort of thing, you might be better off with a, a small shade tree that's actually trimmed up properly as opposed to a bushy. But we're getting into smack. But, but I don't hear the term grasses and that sort of thing. So there's all kinds of opportunities for low, you know, out of, out of the way of guy, guy wires. Uh, Soften this thing up and make it look right. Any other questions? That it's just like to make a point. I Perfect. am a landscape architect, so I am familiar with <laughs> trees and shrubs and whatnot. And I think they could make this work. I, primarily, uh, when I've worked with KG in the past, they want to limit any large shade trees underneath the high lines, and I can see that. And but there's quite a bit of, of area there where there won't be high lines, so I think they can make the. I think they can make it work. Even with, with, with the requirement the of shade trees, and I don't know where, trees, I don't know where all their where all their high lines are, but uh, it seems to me there's enough room in there where they can. If if that's a problem, they get, like they said, you can substitute the shrubs and the and the smaller smaller trees if you need to. But I'm pretty sure they can make a make a plan work. Mr. Warren, and especially on the I mean, on the east side, I don't know if there are any okay. high lines coming in from the east side. So said two, I think. <clears throat> Ready? Under the circumstances, it looks like we need to get somebody that knows about it. So my opinion would basically be, like Chuck, I don't know that much about shrubs and stuff, but the landscape architect could give, it, give us a design to be approved by the staff based upon the regulations of the code. Well, they have to submit one. That's what I'm saying. They would yeah. have, Evers, you would have to hire somebody yeah. to submit one to the to get this approval. My only concern is, is Chuck brought it up earlier, about you get too much because it's on a major intersection, make sure you don't get a blind spot in there. That's my right. concern. Any, any other questions the agent? One, la one last comment, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, 
just want to make sure that we're able to figure out from with staff or from your action what our design is going to be. We have, we're allowed to substitute shrubs and ornamentals for the required shade trees. If I can't get that to work with the power lines that are going to be in there, how am I going to be evaluated on my plan? You know, uh, I think we need to give you some clear direction. Thank you. That would be appreciated. No other questions, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else in the chamber want to hear this or talk on this item? Any Anybody else want to discuss this item? How about anybody virtual? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to commission. Scott, my question. Oh, Scott, you got something? I did want to provide some feedback about uh, staff working with the applicant that if they do submit landscape plans for approval, uh, you know, there is a little bit of discretion in terms of what they can submit that would meet the needs, the requirements, but also staff uh, would have the ability to uh, fine tune it with an adjustment at a staff level as opposed to a complete variance. So there is some flexibility on both sides, from the applicant side and from the staff reviewing it as well. Okay, bring it back to commission. With pleasure, the board. How do we make a motion to that? I think that's, I think we're in agreement that we want we want the applicant and staff to come to an agreement, following the the ordinance as close as we can without causing problems. How do we how do we form a motion that does that? I don't know of any other way than simply denying the variance at this stage, and then leaving it to staff once the plans are done to evaluate the plan. That seem reasonable. Unreal. So, I would move that we deny the variance. I'll second. Second. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, I'm kind of with Mr. Warren. I mean, I, I want to deny the variance, but. I feel like we should give some guidance to uh, Evergy on design. And, and is there a way that we can add some language to just the motion for denial? I mean, I was thinking that uh, we could, instead of having shade trees, we have ornamental trees or we have bushes or we just have no shade trees um, in the areas that are going to have overhead lines. Mr. Green, I, mean, there, I don't know. There's already I, a fair amount of, of flexibility built into the landscape ordinance. Okay. You know, and I think given the, the frontages we're talking about, the length of the frontage, I don't know that we can get that detailed. I, I think there's columnar trees, tall, narrow ones. There's other solutions they can come up with. I think given the flexibility in the ordinance, and the extra flexibility of staff being allowed to tweak it if they need to for safety's sake, I, I think that's enough. Okay. I do, too. You're, you're the landscape architect. No, he is. I'm, I just <laughs> work I agree with one. what you said. <laughs> but, but, I think they you can agree. make it work, work the staff. I don't see any problem with them making it work with the staff. I don't okay. think we need to get involved at all. Okay. That's all the question, then. So we got a motion to deny. Second. Motion by Ms. Foster, second by <coughs> Mr. Nix. You, Mr. Ms. Miles or Mr. Nix? Mr. Nix, I think. I, I guess Cindy also seconded it, so any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Nay. Mr. Duell opposed it. Okay, next item is BZA 2021-0070, front yard setback for a carport, 1410 East Gilbert. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Kathy Morgan for the planning staff. Um, I want to go through the slides before 
um, I tell you the findings or the evaluation of the planning staff regarding this request. Um, as you can see, this is a residential area. This lot is narrow and long. And if you look up here off Indiana, there is uh, access to the rear of this lot. Next, please. Okay, so you can see up at the top of your screen where the access is. They do have a, a gate across there, a, a hurricane fence, chain link fence, and then uh, this open area behind the main structure, which is, at, which is at the south end of the lot. Next. Uh, this is um, our future growth map that shows that, that it's appropriate for uh, residential development and you know carports are not unusual for this board to consider next uh, okay this is an updated site plan because when we go through the pictures showing what is currently existing it does not match this site plan and it's a little bit difficult to see on the screen but there's a 15 by 15 foot box uh, right there where the, the main entrance to the house would be. So um, the request is to reduce um, or vary that front setback uh, to allow this 15 by 15 uh, carport and it would reduce the front setback down to one foot. Uh, from 20 feet to one foot. Uh, ne next. Okay, so uh, this is the house. As you can see, there's already um, a wooden fence that's built right on the sidewalk at the back edge of the sidewalk. Next. Um, this is looking uh, northeast across where they've already poured the concrete. Uh, this was an ins a case where uh, the applicant had to ask for permission uh, or forgiveness and then ask for permission. So um, in discussion with the applicant, they would, um, if the variance were granted, they would um, make the change to just a 15 by 15 foot area for the carport next. Uh, this is looking uh, down the street or west from the, the uh, property site. And as you can see, there's already a house on this corner that has the same kind of um, situation. And in staff checking it to see if this had been uh, permitted or anything like that, it has not. Uh, this was um, built over a weekend and so uh, it didn't, they did not bother to apply for any permits. Next. And this is looking west at the site. Um, you can see this chain link fence here. That's at the property line. Um, you can see where the, the fence, the privacy, wooden privacy fence is right at the back side of the sidewalk. Uh, the structure, uh, roof structure is shown to be uh, attached to the main building. Uh, and so the roof would extend with that slope that would then drain right onto the sidewalk. Next. Uh, this is the north end of the lot that, of which I was speaking. Um, there is, this is a drive uh, that's coming south off what it, that street right there and the gate, so they do have, they have access to the rear of the house uh, where uh, a structure, and there is a door back there, so a, a carport could be easily put in the, on the rear of the structure next. Uh, these are the houses um, just across the street looking southwest. This is a mature neighborhood, um, and so we do have a lot of um, houses that were built in that area from 1909, I think, to when I checked to 
um, the late 20s, so it is a mature neighborhood. Um, most of the houses or properties in that area are single family residential. Um, next, go back please to the uh, site plan. Go back a couple. What, I want the, there, that's what I want. So uh, in staff's evaluation of meeting the five criteria uh, for a variance, is that um, the uniqueness is not met because there is available access to the rear of the property and a carport could be put on the north side of the main structure. The adjacent property um, finds that staff evaluation finds that the carport along the front property line is not in character uh, with the property to the east properties to the east and the neighborhood in general. Um, the applicant did not provide a site plan indicating the location of easements for gas and electric. Um, I believe that the electric company uh, or the gas company was notified uh, because the gas line does come in from the front and the existing concrete pad goes over that gas line. Um, the hardship staff evaluated it and finds that the owner, property owner, created their own hardship. And um, also with public interest, um, this will adversely affect the neighborhood. That's a walkable neighborhood. Um, this creates some impediments to retaining that walkability. Um, so, um, as again, staff finds um, the spirit and intent of the Unified Zoning Code um, when considering all the factors of the request that this, does, this application does not meet the, the spirit and intent of the Unified Zoning Code. Um, the board can find if the board should choose to make different findings. Um, the staff has provided alternative uh, findings that one, the front yard setback reduction only apply to the car port as shown in the site plan. Uh, that a survey drawing with a scaled site plan with all easements for utilities and the structure shall be submitted by the applicant before the variance is considered to be final and that the applicant shall obtain the proper building permits and inspections um, and the modifications must comply with all state, county, and any other applicable standards. And I will answer any questions. Any questions? I have a question. Kathy, if we were to deny the, this request, obviously the work that's been done on the carport would have to come down. What's the status on the fence? That's, I mean, that's, is that in violation? Um, is JR, JR, could you help me? It's my understanding that the fence could be built on the property line. I don't think a solid fence is permitted on the front. Good afternoon, commissioners. JR Cox, Metropolitan Planning. A fence could be built on the property line. There are, in our current code, there are some distances. A fence has to remain back from a driveway. Um, I do not know, I don't remember if this one meets that, but it is existing, so essentially it'd be non-conforming. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. sorry. If they put this thing up overnight, would we be sitting here having this discussion? Uh, if I'm following the question, it's possible if someone complained about it that we still could, sure. But nobody complained about the neighbors. Is that what we're saying? I, I'd have to say apparently not. <clears throat> So they're okay, but these people are not, so, so we understand. Well, from the appearances, it would also be in violation as well of a different setback probably. Yeah, there was a complaint. On this one? Mm -hmm. So apparently there was a complaint. Someone did make a complaint about this one, but apparently not the adjacent one. Any other questions of staff? Ms. Foster? 
Kathy, it looks to me like this driveway to the west side of the house goes to the back or, or even a little past the back of the house. Is that correct? Is that an accessible driveway? Can you go forward to the photo that shows that? There you yeah. go. Um, see, they have that little bump out there that is makes it too narrow for them okay. to access the back from the front of the driveway or from the street. Is that a doorway in that little bump out, an access into the house from um, the back of that driveway? You know, it appears to be, but I, I honestly, I can't remember. Is that Maybe part the, of the apple house or is that a little shed back there? Is that the shed set that, back? And there's it looked it looks on the aerial like there's space between yeah. that. Uh, yeah, it yes, it a is shed. a shed. So there, so that if they pulled to the end of this driveway, they would have access to the back of their house, pretty uh, straightforward. As the applicant, yeah, yeah. What's there? Any other questions, staff? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, applicant or agent? Applicant or agent? Mr. Chairman, I'm uh, looking at the list of folks who are online, and I do not see Jose Barbara, the owner, uh, on online either. He's in the audience. Oh, please come forward and give your name and address, please. You have ten minutes. Hello, my name is Jose Barba. And I'm the owner of the 1410 East Giver with my, my mother, he's here too. And uh, we tried to do only the carport close to the front door because she has no way to walk real well now. She has a seizure in the back. And she tried to start building the carport in the front. Well, I get a notification from the city with the, she don't have the permit. So I stopped my mother to do it. And they try to do it the right way. That's why I only want the carport 15 by 15 so she can walk away from the house so she can buy his groceries and all the stuff she needed. And honestly, and, and the side, uh, east side of the house, is no way we can put it. Same to the west side. And I know in the north side, it's a long way. Uh, and it costs a lot of money to us to build it. So the only option we have is only in the front and be less uh, expensive. So that's all the my required, you know, to put something in the front, you can be able to do your stuff. And that's what I can say, you know. Ms. Fosh. On the back corner of the house in this picture, mm -hmm. is there space between the back corner of the house and the shed, so someone can walk through to the back door? Uh, it is only like six foot, uh, six, six to eight foot only. And there's only that, that, that driveway is go to the shake. Yeah. Yeah, it's. And the shed is set back from the house, so there's space between the house and the shed? Uh, to walk through, not to drive through, but you could walk from the back end of the driveway. Yeah, you can walk to your back door. Mm -hmm. Is there some reason that was not a satisfactory solution? No, because well, honestly, it is more a space to put concrete. It's a little more expensive, and so that we don't think about. It costs a lot of more money to to do that one, then we don't have it, honestly, to put in that, that side. And also the cardinal feet from there. And But you could drive on the driveway 
to the shed, just short oh, of no, the shed. Oh, no, you can't. I know, I know enough space to drive one vehicle in, in there. Not into the shed, but to the back corner of the house. Driveway already goes to the back corner of the house. Could Honestly, just, just six feet. Six yeah, six it's feet. Too, too small. But that's enough room to put a sidewalk to your back door, which would be less concrete than the 15 by 15 put foot pad you put in front. Would it not? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? The applicant? Seeing none, thank you. Anybody else want to speak on this item? Please come forward and give us your name. You got three minutes. My name is John Bymar. I live at 1404 East Gilbert. <clears throat> I've been there since 75. That was a vacant lot. Connie owned it. Diane bought it. They tore the house down and put that module home in there. Diane had a carport there on the west side of that house. When she moved, she took the carport with her. So you can drive all the way through there. I'm the one that helped Connie and them take care of that lot. Who's going to clean the sidewalk when that snow comes off that carport, like the one on the west side, it's four foot, 12 foot long, it fills up with snow. He doesn't shovel the snow. Two people in the neighborhood shovels, I do and Jenny. Nobody else in the neighborhood will shovel snow off those sidewalks. I don't think a carport should be in front of the house. If there was a carport there before, put it back on that side. They don't need to be there. Thank you. Any questions, Speaker? Yes. Come back, please. Oh, sorry. Okay, I just want to clarify. There used to be a carport at the end of the existing driveway? Actually, that carport was the full length of that house. It okay. was a metal one. Okay. Diane used to pull her truck up there. She pulled her Volkswagen in there. There was a door on the west side of the house. The door was removed. Okay, but there's still a door on the north side of the house? Okay, thank yeah. you. Is there anyone else here want to speak on this item? Does anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Applicants got two minutes of rebuttal if you want to have anything else to say. He motion, he says he does it, so I'll bring it back to commission. What's the pleasure of the board? I guess I got a question as staff. I know we got into a deal some time ago about a carport on the side of a house and where the water was dumping between the two houses and that became a big issue. Um, of course, I don't know if this thing is, if you got a foot or had a little bit more than that, I guess that snow could fall behind the fence and be on the carport. But anyway, Mr. Warren. Difficult issue because, you know, you got folks with, with a limited means. They've already gone part way into it. But this is not the way that areas need to be developed. You don't want to see carports on, you know, when you got small yards to begin with and and to cover that up with the carport coming out the front, I, I move to deny. Second. Second. I okay, got a motion to deny by Mr. Warren, second by Ms. Foster. Any discussion? All in favor Mr. say aye. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies, sir. Uh, staff have alerted me to the fact that we probably, if you could, as part of that motion, I'm wondering if the motion makers would be okay to find that the five uh, factors are, are not found. That does not meet the five criteria. You just need that specifically. I'll incorporate that in as a part of my motion. I'm fine with that as well. Question on that. One of the five was they would access from the backside down an alley. That's two, over 200 feet from that gate. Probably just looking at the plat. Me, that's not a reasonable 
entrance back to the back for access to that. I think the same factor is addressed, though, by the fact that there was an existing carport in the back at the end of the existing driveway, so they do still have an other alternative besides putting it in the front. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against yeah. the motion. All I'm saying is to use one of the five was the fact they did have access from the alley on the back side. If you look at the plat, it's probably two to 250 feet from that gate. That is back to the house. Yeah, and so, I agree so, with that. I'm just saying that factor is also addressed by another alternative in the backyard. And of course, I, I'm going to say I don't know if the carport that was there previously it was permitted or legal or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I say, we had a case here a while back where we had one on the end of a house and the neighbors opposed it. And and what I would, uh, sorry, sir, but one quick comment is that uh, I believe this is a good discussion because in order to provide the variance, my understanding, you have to find that all five do exist. So it is possible for, you know, one of the factors to exist, but others not to. Uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, I believe that staff will work with the applicant uh, on this because there are options coming in from the back, but they don't necessarily have to be paved because it appears that that alleyway or street that's there is not paved, plus this is residential, so they have the option of using different materials other than pavement to access the rear of the house. So we would, uh, I would direct staff to work with the applicant to make sure that they understand what options are available. Perfect. Any other discussion? All in favor of motion? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion is to deny. And that leaves us to the end of the BZA, right? So we will go back to the Planning Commission. And I believe the first item is going to be 3.1, a vacation 2021 000 0050. <clears throat> Excuse me, Bill Longnecker, Senior Planner, Current Plans. The case you have is vacation case 2001 0050. A request to vacate the platted 35 foot side yard setback running parallel to the east lot line of uh, lot one, the Sander edition. And then we also have a platted eight-foot utility easement that is running parallel to the south property line of that subject property. This case was heard by the subdivision committee last week, and the motion was to approve the application. However, there was uh, some consideration in regards to whether there are utilities located in that platted eight-foot utility easement. And uh, the applicant uh, was directed by the subdivision committee to resolve that question prior to the planning commission meeting. Uh, that issue has been resolved. There are no utilities in that platted eight-foot utility easement. Uh, Evergy has agreed that the applicant's uh, survey of that property has shown no uh, utilities in that easement, and I believe that is what the direction the Planning Commission was looking for from the subdivision. So we're looking to approve this vacation request to vacate that platted 35-foot setback, which was not an issue at subdivision, and to approve the vacation of that platted eight-foot utility easement with the understanding is that there's been no utilities found in that easement. I will stand for question. Any questions? Bill? It's not. Thank you, Bill. Applicant or agent? He indicates he doesn't want to speak. Is there anybody else that want to speak on this item here in the chamber? Is there anybody virtual? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to me. I move for approval. Second. 
Mr. Hartman moves to approve it. Second by Ms. Foster. No, it was, it was oh, I'm sorry. You got to speak up. I can't hardly hear you down there. Second. All right. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That carries unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. I believe the next one is 4.3 conditional use 2021 000 056. Kathy Morgan for the planning department. Um, this case, um, if you were able to look at the background on this case, we, the planning commission heard this case uh, last beginning of last year, and it was uh, the conditional use for the expanded um, uh, operation of the kennel boarding training facility was approved um, and they were supposed to have gotten moved into a, a new facility on 247th Street. And so uh, the conditional use was to sunset on December 31st of 2021. Um, that has not happened. Uh, the applicant came back. There was no um, provision to allow for an extension of that time uh, that if they had to do something else, then they had to come back through a full conditional use process. Um, they are not asking for any changes to what was approved in the conditional use of 2020-10. Um, um, they want, want the same expanded operation what is changing is they are requesting that the time be extended to uh, 15 months to March of 2022 uh, to get the new facility built and, and ready for, um, to occupy. Um, so let's see, um, st uh, staff is recommending uh, that the Kennel Breeding Training Center be approved. Uh, if you look under recommendation uh, number two, um, that was, that's a new condition. Uh, and then under number 13, uh, that's a new condition because of, because of the, the date change. Um, will you go through the slides, please, Paul? Um, so, so this is a, a 4.5, a little over four and a half acre tract. The county regulations require that they have at least five acres uh, for a for dog kennel, uh, and so that's one of the reasons for the conditional use. The next one, please. Uh, it's out in the it's out in the county, so it um, it needs to follow the rural. Uh, guidelines and fringe development um, of the <coughs> comprehensive plan. Next, please. Uh, this is their site plan. This is the current site plan. Um, you see the, the main structure here. Uh, they do have a drive and parking in front of um, the office area. Um, this is a, an outdoor run. These are uh, kennels. This is another uh, exercise area. And this is an area where the breeding animals uh, are kept. So there's no expansion mm -hmm. of what this existing footprint is. Next, please. Um, so this is looking at the back of the facility. This is the, another small um, outdoor run. This is the um, run for the, the breeding dogs next. And here you can see uh, the main outdoor exercise area and you can see uh, ki covered kennels along this side of the building. Next. 
Um, this is the front uh, of the building looking east. Um, that's the main entrance into the, the business. And then the larger building has indoor kennels and, that, and uh, doggy daycare. Uh, they provide shampooing, uh, styling salon for the dogs. Uh, next. And this is looking back toward the south east corner of the property. Uh, they have an on-site lagoon in this area. Um, they have to maintain the surfaces to keep them clean, uh, sanitary, and that's taken care of by um, licensing requirements. Next. Okay, this is looking from the rear of that outdoor run toward northwest toward the rear of the existing house. Next. And this is looking west uh, to the property, uh, residential uh, property. And as you can see, um, they were required to have um, trees planted along this. Um, they're still in the process of meeting that uh, landscaping requirement. Uh, along the <clears throat> west side of the property next. Um, this is looking north uh, from the corner of the office building, the facility, uh, the drive entrance onto um, 29th Street, West 29th Street, and then this, there's a, a farmland on the north that's uh, used for agriculture next. Okay, go back. Uh, go back to the site plan, if you would. So I believe in your packet, let's see, you have the site plan, um, and the, the applicant is here. I will answer any questions, but he will be better able to answer specific questions on this. Any questions of Kathy? I've got one. Carmen. So this layout, the site plan that you see here is the one, I mean, it's exactly the way it was approved? When no, this, um, this is updated because it has some additional landscaping. I don't believe, I don't believe that this uh, outdoor run for the breeding dogs was, was there when it was approved last year. I'm not certain, though. But, he, but basically, he's running the operation just just like they said they were going to. They just need more time to right. develop the other side. Exactly. So they need an extension of what they've got. Um, yes. Okay. With Part two of, new conditions. Yeah, the, with the conditions that were noted in the staff recommendation. Yeah, 13 and whatever the other one Yeah. Was. Any other questions of Kathy? Yeah, um, the extension is going to be to uh, March 31st of 2023. Three. Two. Right. 23. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, 23. Right. I do have a question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought you said 2022. No, it's just. That's under Staff item 13. Staff report says 23. Okay. Yeah, it says 23. Did I? It's an ex, it's fifth for 15 months beginning right upon now. approval of this conditional use. Should the planning commission determine that? And, and thank you for clarifying that because I thought that's just kind of some kind of an arbitrary date out there. And, and it was, yeah, that was based on what the applicant requested. 15 okay. months, yeah. Thank any, you. Any other questions you can? Seeing none, thank you. Yeah. I uh, do. Uh, That's you'll have to wait till we have the applicant and then you'll have your time, ma'am. Thanks, Kathy. Applicant or agent. Uh, 
Sorry this has taken so long. We have been working very hard to get it done. Give us uh, your name and address, oh, please. Oh, Hank Cocking at 22215 West 29th Street North. Thank you. Uh, we've got our plans through SBT. They cost us $56,000. And we've got our um, uh, approval through or the county. They were sent to the county to be reviewed. That cost us $3,000. So we're working diligently to try to get this done. We just didn't realize how long it was going to take. Um, the... Um, the other, the other facility, the area that we have has already got a conditional use permit, and we do want to get out of there. And we are trying to, I just, you know, with COVID and all this other stuff that hit, it's just been taken. I didn't realize how much planning it was going to take to come up <laughs> with this. And then um, I didn't realize all the steps that we had to take, I guess, and I didn't realize it was going to take so long. And, and I apologize that we have to ask for more time, but we, this is it. I don't, we're not asking for any more after this. We're, and we're asking for 15 months just because if we can get out of there sooner, we want to get out of there sooner. The only, you know, and just kind of a little bit about, you know, if we get shut down, and I know it's, it's my fault, it falls back on me if, if it does happen, but I do have 10 employees, and we are up to $175,000 in payroll that we've paid or, or more this year. I mean, we service people out of California, Arkansas, Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri, and Oklahoma. So we have people come in from all over from these states to train dogs because we got a really good reputation. We have really good clients. Um, I understand, and I, I, I feel for my neighbors. I, sent, I talked to all the neighbors. I reached out to all the neighbors, all of them, but one answered, which, you know, I know people are busy, you know, I, I can't, you know, she probably was busy, couldn't get back with me, but I was just trying to get their feel on what they thought and if it would be okay, and so that's kind of where we're at, and so that's, we're trying to get out of there, and we've spent a considerable amount of money to get out of there, it's just has taken us a lot, you know, this is the first time I've designed or built something that's going to be this big. I mean, it's going to be over a $900,000 facility. So, I mean, it's going to bring revenue for the county, for the city, you know, for people that come in from out of state and, and employees. So, I mean, and, you know, if it doesn't get approved and we have to appeal it, if there's a way we can just wait, not shut us down until we get to the appeal or something like that. Um, but every other neighbor I've talked to was, was okay with it. I just don't know about the one neighbor. Are you in agreement with the two additional requirements that was on the? Do what now? Are you in agreement with the other two? Yes. Items? Yeah, I'm in agreement with moving out okay. of there. I'm I'm in agreement. Yeah, we we will be out of there. I've already got a builder. I've got Coonrod bidding it, and I got Jaredet Construction bidding it right now. So um, uh, it's uh, everything's ready. All I got to do is get the numbers back, and and when he's ready to go, we're ready to go. We're ready to build. We got the NOI, every the grant, the water, waste, the water situation running through there. We've done everything. It's just taken me so longer than I anticipated. And I apologize to my neighbors. I know that you know we're trying to get out of there, but that's kind of where we're at. And then if you know if you do shut us down, I do have just a little rebuttal. But yeah, yeah, uh, Mr. Cocking, mm -hmm. what are your plans? For the building, once you have so, moved so, out, so when it, it. When, the, when it's over with, then mm -hmm. there's only twelve dogs can be there, and that, they'll be our breeding dogs. You'll be back to what the, yeah, the original was. yeah the yeah. zoning requirement mm -hmm. is for that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions, the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just to repeat what that question was, uh, Commissioner Fox had asked about the run and which side it was on. I wanted to confirm if it was present when we approved the conditional use originally or if that's been added since. Oh, and the question was to confirm whether or not the run was there when, it was ori when the original conditional use was... And the applicant has indicated that, yes, it was there as part of the application for the prior conditional use. Anybody in the chamber want to speak on this item? I know there's somebody virtual. Yes, I do. Give us your name and address, please. Nancy Hill, 22321 West 29th Street North. 
Andale. I'm the neighbor to the west. You've got three minutes. And my question, okay, I'm sorry. My question is, is when it first went in the first time, they were given seven years to put our cedar trees in. And they put the cedar trees in right before they expanded the dog business. And then we gave them 15 months. And now they're just now worried about another expansion. I'm just, the false promises continue to happen. Um, I know the neighbor to the east, when they bought their house, which now I think has already been two years ago, when they bought it, they were told that the dog business was going to be gone in six months. And since then, they've already put in a pool and have expanded as well into their living and the dog business is still there. Yeah. My only concern as a neighbor who always gets all the turnarounds plus everything else that happens in my yard, I'm just concerned that this 15 months is gonna to go to another 15 months, to another 15 months, to another 15 months. You know, we've had promises so many times and there's no ground broke yet on Andale Road. Um, that's my concern. I'm not against them losing their business or anything like that. I know they've worked very hard to build their business, and I'm very proud of them with their business. But as a neighbor, I continue to see the false promises. Anything else? That's it that I can think of right now. All right, thank you. Any questions, Speaker? Any questions for the Speaker? Thank you, ma'am. Is there anybody else virtual want to speak on this item? The applicant, you have two minutes to rebut if you choose so. You need to, you need to speak in the mic. I guess if it's not approved. I guess I, I would have a couple of questions, and that's it. Okay. I'll bring it back to the commission. With the pleasure, the board. I move that we uh, approve first half comment, um, and at the end of that 15-month period, that's the end of the extensions that we'll have. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Green, second by Ms. Foster. I guess I, I'm going to support the motion. Oh, the attorney may have a problem with it. Okay. Um, well, I was. it might be a clarification thing, Commissioner Green. Uh, Justin Wagoner, Assistant County Counselor. I, I think that um, as individual commissioners, you could have them in mind whether you think additional extensions could be appropriate or not be appropriate. Uh, I don't think you can bind your future selves uh, 15 months down the road. Um, that doesn't mean, again, that you may not think this is appropriate. You, know, you could even make comments in the record if you think that's appropriate in your individual capacities, but I don't think as a planning commission you can prohibit them from potentially seeking and obtaining any additional extensions. I understand the concern that the neighbors expressed on this, but I don't, I don't think you could do that with uh, any action that you would take uh, today. But okay. let me know if you have any questions uh, on that. Well, then I'll withdraw the last sentence of my motion. <laughs> I move that we approve per staff comment, period. And I agree. I'm just going to say I'm going to support it because I'm in the construction business and right now if we ordered a new building back in the day we could get one in 12 weeks now it's uh, 48 weeks hmm. uh, so you think 15 months is a long time it isn't mm -hmm. and this the whole industry is changing and uh, it's sad but that's what we're dealing with I'm going to support the motion. And I just want everybody to know why it may take 15 months to do it. Hey, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? It's unanimous. Next item is CUP 2021 0062. Deferred from 12-2. And this did go in front of the <clears throat> board and it was approved unanimously. Six yes, the district advisory board uh, four. Um, will you run through the, the uh, maps, please? 
Paul. The zone, I'm sorry. You take that. Oh, sorry. Um, the zoning, uh, this is a CUP. Um, it was where uh, tight ends was approved, and now it's the clutch house. The, the property uh, has changed ownership. Uh, as you can see by the zoning, you have the Masonic home across the street with quite a bit of um, space uh, back from the Seneca, and then the MF29 um, on the south side of that is, at this point, is vacant land. It's not developed. Um, east of the site is single-family residential and uh, two-family, and north of the site is limited commercial. It has indoor storage and, and warehousing. And um, as part of the original CUP, there was fencing screening required along that east property line and then um, landscaping along University and Seneca. Go to the next slide, please. Um, and the, here you can see the aerial um, the uh, music and entertainment uh, facility will be located only in this building. Uh, the north building has other retail spaces and has some vacant spaces that they're hoping to fill. Um, there is a solid fence along, as I said, along the east property line next. Um, and although this, um, our future growth map uh, shows this as residential, that is, um, that location um, at Kellogg and South Seneca is a gateway into the Delano neighborhood. And with the, the change that was approved, the CUP that approved the limited commercial activity there, um, that's where we're trying to focus um, the commercial development next. Um, this was the um, community unit plan uh, that was approved. It's, it's all one parcel. Um, I just wanted to bring that back up for your, to refresh your recall of that um, original CUP application. Next. Um, so this is looking uh, northeast at the two buildings from the corner of University and Seneca. Uh, at this, uh, Seneca is a boulevard from um, Kellogg north to uh, McLean. So it has the divider. It has trees um, in the median in most places. Uh, sometimes they have um, right and left turn lanes um, to go, get across the street, but it is designated as a boulevard. Next. Uh, here's, a, here's a better uh, picture of the corner of the clutch house. You can see along here that they do have a separation wall. There is side, There are sidewalks uh, in the front of the business and as it runs along uh, West University. Next. Um, this is looking um, south along Seneca, Seneca Street to the, to the right of your picture here is uh, the land property of the Masonic home. Next. Uh, and this is looking back southeast at the, at the two buildings. And here you can see the lighting standards and the uh, screening, the uh, trees, that type of thing that was, were required by the CUP. Next. Okay, go back. Um, I thought I had a picture of the fence in there. Go back. Hmm. I guess I didn't. The fence is a com. It's a. It it was um, specifically allowed for the materials that it had. It's horizontal boards uh, on the bottom and on the top. It's a six foot fence and probably two feet on the top is. Uh, some kind of uh, metal uh, horizontal panel. Uh, so that was approved by the, in the CUP, uh, original CUP document. Um, as I said, we did meet 
uh, with District Advisory Board 4. Um, there were members of the public there that there was a lot of discussion and the DAB did decide to um, approve unanimously per staff comment to approve the entertainment and music to be within the building where the clutch house is. And no outdoor uh, music or events because they do have a patio uh, on the north side of that building and I think they've, been, they've had DJs out there and whatever and so that is not allowed. Any questions? Warren? Uh, part of the discussion we had last time on this was the, the applicant agreed to uh, provide security. Uh, was that uh, addressed in the, in the DAB meeting? Um, yes, they did discuss that. And um, the <clears throat> applicant is um, working out um, the conditions for that when they have events uh, at the uh, at the business um, that they will provide some kind of security. I think um, the applicant is here and he can answer that better. Any other questions? Mr. Hartman? Yeah, I think um, the first time we heard it, there was a, uh, a gentleman on the east side of the fence there that was complaining about the light spillage into his yard. Yes. Now, don't these light fixtures have uh, shields on them to prohibit that um, yes they are available and they it does the CEP does require that the light be directed down to the parking lot are they not working or he just thinks it's brighter than it should be it's they probably don't have the right kind of shield on the fixture that blocks that light down well, should, should be able to correct that don't you yes think? okay any other questions uh, just to refresh my memory, we're hearing this case again because we deferred it so the DAB could hear. Is that was that the reason? That was that's my understanding. Yes, okay. that that was the only reason it was deferred. Any other questions? Thank you, Kathy. Applicant or agent. Hello, uh, my name is Emmanuel Kalori. Uh, the business address is 524 South Seneca, uh, 67213. Um, <clears throat> I do uh, agree with the staff recommendation, as they stated. And um, I was also asked to be, asked to appear at the DAB, which I presented uh, our situation although there was no problem uh, with uh, music or entertainment within the building, although the neighbors expressed concern about noise in the parking lot, and there was an issue with uh, lighting in the parking lot. And also another neighbor said there was a <clears throat> couple of uh, boards uh, need to be repaired on the fence in the east of our building. And um, <clears throat> we also approached the neighbors and we told them that we can get those boards repaired and also work with uh, noise levels where on an even day we could provide some security at late at night. Therefore, there are no uh, noises or at least mitigate the noises for the neighbors. And one of the neighbors is uh, very cooperative and he said he has no problem with uh, music or entertainment inside, uh, except uh, there was one employee that he had those uh, boombox cars uh, running by parking lot. And that employee is no longer with us, by the way. So from time to time, we do have um, uh, customers uh, drive through the parking lot and uh, Sometimes we don't have no control uh, on those cars. Uh, but especially on a busy night, we are trying to have some security about three to four hours late at night. That way it's not going to bother the neighbors. What about the lighting, parking lot lighting? Pardon me? 
What about the parking lot lighting then? Par parking lot lights are <clears throat> in compliance with the architectural designs. Um, I, although uh, we are trying to put some blockers on the house northeast side where it doesn't shine on his house. <clears throat> although I have pictures I can show you, it's really not really shining on the house. Although uh, we are trying to take the measure to put a blocker on the uh, east side of the house. Okay. Any questions, uh, applicant, Mr. Warren? The uh, talk to me about the uh, security. I mean that there was concern of the neighbors that uh, when you're running as late as you are, uh, that things go on in the in the parking lot. And there's nobody there to. to uh, Correct that. How are you? How are you dealing with? What's your plan for that? Uh, you need to have the parking lights on, and um, um, especially at night. And um, we have a problem with the timer, and um, I'm trying to find that person who fixed it, um, but they were on. I mean, during the day, it's not going to bother anybody. It's a more electric bill for me. But at night, uh, we are trying to fix the problem on the northeast uh, uh, corner neighbor. Well, specifically, there was c concern about cars that were parking up, backing up in the parking lot next to these houses, and then revving their engines for you know fairly significant periods of time. And it's very loud. Um, there, you can, we can obviously the the neighbors can call the police, but by the time that comes around. The, the impression that I got was that you were going to have security to help deal with that on a on a fairly quick basis. Is that what have you agreed to on that? Yeah, um, in, in terms of uh, working with the noise levels, is that what you're referring to, right, on the parking lot? Right. Okay. Um, the neighbor to the northeast corner uh, expressed that concern, and. Um, we are, like I mentioned, trying to hire security where they monitor, and even uh, our staff is going to check time to time. We are creating a log, you know, every hour, and they, you know, walk through the parking lot just to make sure <clears throat> that, uh, you know, everything is okay. While you're still up here, I want to ask Kathy, can, did you have an aerial? That I can see. Yeah, I'll you the aerial. Pardon me. Yeah, so there I go. Right. It appears there's two entrances on uh, Seneca, and then there's one that yeah. goes out on the north. Mm hmm Yes. And one on the south. Yes. I guess I'm curious if there were. If those could be gated with just a pole, the one that goes out to north and south, so it forces everybody to either come in and go out to drives on Seneca, maybe that would eliminate some people after hours parking in the back. And I don't know I, from traffic or whoever if that's... Yep, traffic and fire... Yes. Department access. Uh, I don't know where the, I don't have a map that shows where the uh, water hydrants are located. Um, and the, and that, the fire department could take and either cut the padlock or right. have a key. Right. If I may, sir, I, I think that would take a little bit more discussion than maybe we've, okay. we've got here, but we certainly would be willing to reach out to other departments and get some input okay. and feedback on that. Thank you. Is there any other questions of the applicant? Ms. Foster? I would just comment that what we're being asked here is whether they can have live entertainment inside the existing bar. Whether we approve or disapprove that is not going to necessarily affect any of these other problems with noise and light. Um, I, I sympathize with the neighbors, and I would like to see these problems solved, but I just, I'm not sure we're the entity that ought to be trying to solve them in this instance with a conditional use discussion. 
or excuse me, a CUP discussion. Any other questions? Is there anybody else in here would like to speak on this item? Anybody in the chamber want to speak on this item? Anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Anybody virtual? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to commission. I would like to move that we approve per staff recommendations. Second. We got a motion to approve by Ms. Foster, second by Mr. Duell, Mr. Warren. I'm, I'm going to uh, be in opposition. I, I think that when we're doing a conditional use, the the restrictions on the on the use have to do with basically we're saying it's okay to do a neighborhood do a nightclub but it's if it's, if there's a neighborhood issue there then we can put conditions on it so i would without the condition of, of security uh, i can't i can't uh, support. is that a substitute motion no that's just i'm going to vote against it i understand i would point out this is an amendment to a cup not a conditional use but for whatever that's worth. Amounts and I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with Mr. Warren. Any other discussion? Motions approved for staff comment. All in favor say aye. 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 Who's opposed? Aye. 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 I guess we need to do a roll call. Yes, sir. So the motion is to approve per staff comments. Bill Johnson? No. Fox? No. That, that's a no. McKay? No. Gross is not here. Green? Aye. Duell? Aye. Blick? Not here. Nix? Aye. Foster? Aye. Warren? No. Joe Johnson? Okay, he left. Miles? No. Hartman? Aye. Lawrence? Not here. So I have one, two, three, four, five in favor. One, two, three, four, five opposed. <laughs> Motion no. fails. Motion fails. Are we going to have another motion? I have a question, staff. It seems that security is the thing that we're talking about more than anything. Is it possible that we can add some kind of verbiage to the <coughs> motion about security, some kind of requirements of the owner? I think it's a I ask Jeff. We will defer to legal on that one. Yeah, he's coming. <clears throat> Jeff Van Zant, City Assistant Attorney. Uh, you could do an alternative motion at this point. Uh, if not, the motion fails. Uh, so that's all you can do by adding additional conditions to it. So, yeah. Mr. Warren, okay, Jeff, I'll make yeah. a I'll make a motion to approve. Subject to a condition that the applicant provide security on evenings uh, that they have live entertainment running past uh, 11 p.m. at night. I have a second. I'll second. Any discussion? Let's do a roll call again. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, just taking quick notes. Okay. So here's what I have as the uh, motion. The motion is to approve su subject to staff con con recommendations and also subject to an additional condition. The applicant provides security when, interta when live entertainment goes past 11 p.m. Until, until what time? Until closing. So whenever it goes past eleven, they, 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 they can go to two. They can go to they can go to two. So if they if they if they're open till two, they provide security till two. 
So then the security would kick them out of the parking lot at, at the time they closed, what you're saying? I've been in the restaurant and bar business for 20 years. Just good luck. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Better than nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, go through the roll call. Yep. Okay. Uh, Bill Johnson? Yes. Fox? Yes. Yes. McKay? Yes. Green? Yes. Duel? Yes. Blake is not here. Nix? Yes. Foster? Yes. Warren? Yes. Joe Johnson is not here. Miles? No. Hartman? Yes. And Florence is not here. Nine to one. Motion that carries passes. nine to one, doesn't it? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes. Next item. Zoning case 2021 0054, SF single family to TF3 at uh, MacArthur and South Hoover. Kathy Morgan for the planning department. Um, as you can see um, by the zoning map, um, this was this is Blue Lake addition that was approved. And so right now the, the area outlined in black. There's about, there's 80 lots in there that they are requesting uh, zone change to TF3. Um, the the uh, purple, lavender, whatever color that is, is limited industrial. Uh, you can see that there are uh, several, six lots in this area that are zoned SF5. Uh, and this area is developed with single-family residences. Most of them are uh, mobile homes, manufactured homes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and this is the SF5 um, to the east. It's a, there's a business uh, home located down here in the southeast corner, and then there's a large uh, lake. So, um, the TF3 zoning wouldn't be abutting uh, any developed area. Next. And this is located in an area uh, for new residential. I will give you a brief background. This is right across the street from where um, a conditional use for a rock crushing operation was approved uh, last year. That rock crushing Go back to the aerial, would you please? Now it's the rock crushing is down here on this in this area, but it's at the south end uh, of that parcel. Uh, so most of this south of MacArthur is also industrial and developed with sales and construction services and things like that. Go back, please. Next. Um, and so this is. The, the Mitch did well. <laughs> the ditch, the Mitch Mitchell <laughs> uh, floodway is just, to, is just to the west of that. So um, there's, <laughs> there's right away for that. Go to the next slide, please. And this is, this is looking um, east along MacArthur. I was standing over in front of where the conditional use for the, the, uh, the property for the uh, rock crushing. And so uh, you can see MacArthur has um, a wide uh, right of way and then the residential development along the north side of the street. And I think that's the last slide. Yeah, that's looking northwest toward the ditch. And so staff is recommending um, approval of the requested zone change um, with um, that it does meet the 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 com um, comprehensive plan community investment plan um, and it's appropriate for residential 
And so, and it meets the, you know, zoning uses and character of the neighborhood, um, the, the impact on the development in the community. These are duplexes. They will have on-site parking for the duplexes and not be um, on street parking. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Any questions? And the agent is here. Green. Mr. Green. The subdivision to the north, has, has that plat been approved? Um, yes, it shows on the, it shows on the uh, GIS official map. Okay, I wasn't sure if that had, I, I knew that it had come before us, but I wasn't sure if it had been approved. Philip so, can, Phil, Phil, will be Phil able to can answer that, that, okay. that question, but I pulled it and, up off the zoning map. Okay, well, the reason for the question was just to make sure that it has been approved so that this uh, subdivision to the south here, the one that we're looking at, actually does have access uh, into the subdivision to the north for access for that many units, uh, livable units that are going to be right. proposed. Right. There, there's that. not, this is still part of the same <clears throat> plat. It's just that they're requesting to rezone those yeah. front 80 lots okay. to TF3. So it's okay. all part of that Blue Lake edition. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Kathy. Applicant or agent? Afternoon, Phil Meyer with Boffman Company, agent for the applicant. So um, we're in agreement with staff comments as written. To answer or to update you on a couple things, one, uh, we've been at this for probably about a year now. I think Commissioner Green remembers we had filed a preliminary plat on this property a year ago, and at the time, everything highlighted in red, we were proposing on the plat to do as industrial. Hadn't filed the zone change yet, put that on the plat. We ran into a problem with both the fire department and the traffic engineer in doing that. So this overall subdivision of Blue Lake, which includes the area in red and the property to the north of that was all platted back in 2004, I believe. Um, it's been a slow going development, but it is coming along. The developer has been working with the homeowners association. Um, and the goal was to eliminate the housing that's shown in the red. That's why we we're going to zone it industrial, um, and just keep the single family to the area to the north. Uh, when we got the requirement from both traffic and fire that we had to have a paved access down to MacArthur, um, you can't make that work with one large or four large industrial lots. I mean, the economics are not there to pave a half mile street and get that done. So we've spent some time, we've been working with the HOA, came up with this plan that we would um, zone this property duplex down here. We'll remove that from the single family HOA of this development going. We've been working with fire and traffic on the access between the two subdivisions. Um, we can discuss that with the plat. I don't want to really mix up the zoning issue, land use issue, and the plat issue, but I have got that worked out with those two. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Major? Thank you for clarifying that because that's exactly what I was referring to because I knew that that, it, that this had there had been some attempts at different iterations of what you were going to do in that Correct. in that area and I just this makes this makes sense. To do and so that I clarify the planning commissioners, what you see on the screen today in red is the plat that is there today. That is plat at single family today. We will be replatting the red and the very south end of Blue Lake to. For a duplex development. And the connection. The and the connection between the two the that two gets access be. to MacArthur. Okay. Any other questions? And just one one more. Um, I assume that that connection will have to be in place to be able to fully develop the, the area in red. 
with all with the number of duplexes that you want yeah we're still discussing with the fire department if we right now i've got to get a connection with um once we start off my car with any development i got to get a connection down there i'm trying to get one more phase in before we do that but i don't know if we're going to make that or not thank you phil is there anyone in the chamber want to speak on this item please come forward and give us your name and address please Uh, Bill Hample, uh, 12129 West 14th Street here in Wichita, 67235. Um, I'm the adjacent uh, property owner of the, uh, of the property to the east. Um, we've had that, it, it, part of that uh, is uh, farmland and a, uh, a, about a 20-acre sand pit lake. We've had that property for about 25 years, and there's a, a a chain link fence about a three foot maybe three and a half foot depending upon where you where you're at uh, with a couple of lengths of barbed wire on top of that that surrounds the entire property line uh, and it's uh, it, it's done its uh, job for I think that sand pit's been there for probably 50 years I'm not sure how, how long but uh, well be well before we ever owned the property uh, the current plan calls for uh, about 26 lots that whose backyards would face that property line. And uh, if, if duplexes are approved, uh, they're, now we're talking about 52. Um, the, uh, the property line is about 250 feet, or that, that east property line that, that both properties adjoin is about 250 feet from the uh, that lake and the, the, the banks of the lake are steep. Uh, the water is deep. Uh, so I think there's uh, some really good concerns for safety of the, the people that live within that, uh, you know, the, this, uh, potentially 52 homes. And, and actually, I guess it could be 160 when you look at the uh, 60 homes that could be going into that development. Um, the uh, I've, I sent some photos. Uh, do you have a photo of the fence that I? Yeah, I don't know if you can see that very well, but that that's kind of a depiction of the fence that we have across there. Okay, thanks. Uh, and it's it, it, the chain link is about three three and a half feet high, and then you see the barbed wire, and that goes across the, the entire uh, eastern property line of the subdivision. Um, my concern is that uh, without some sort of solid barrier and with that higher population density that we're going to have with a uh, rezoning the, uh, into duplexes, that that's going to cause a, uh, you know, a lot of potential uh, temptation for children. There's going to be probably, I'm sure, a lot of young families uh, that move in there um, for Exploring, uh, you know, that property that we have there at the lake. Uh, there's going to be a temptation to fish, to explore, to... Um, Mr. Hample. That type of thing. Your yeah. time's up. Do you need another minute? I, I would like another minute, yes. Okay, you got one more minute. Okay. Uh, I've talked to Mr. Stephen, who's the, uh, who's the developer, and uh, I don't want to put words into his mouth, but he did say that he'd be open to some kind of a solid barrier or fence uh, I'm thinking about a, a masonry fence of some sort, a wall that would uh, prohibit the uh, visibility, the opportunity for people to move, children to move from uh, their yard, backyards into our property. So um, I, I had a personal friend that drowned in a, a sand pit lake at one time. So I know that the, the temptation is there and uh, it, it could happen. And just for the sake of uh, safety of the, I have no problem with the uh, uh, rezoning that, but I, I do think that there should be a solid barrier fence there to uh, prohibit to access. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Hamill? I've got one. Mr. Hartman. Um, does that, that fence that we're seeing there, does it also run along the north line of your property? Uh, the north line, yes, it does. It, 
it, uh, sort of, it completely it goes all the way around, around the perimeter. Yes. So I mean, there are existing homes on the on the north side now, right? Yes. So you'd still have that problem. Well, there's a street actually, and they're single family homes. So right. there's a street in between. But the temptation is still there. You can see the lake, I imagine. Can. Okay. Any other questions? Speaker? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone virtual want to speak on this item? Seeing none, agent has two minutes to rebuttal. Yes, I'd like to speak on this. Oh. Give us your name. Uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Gary Tillman. I live at 3218 South Blue Lake in the Blue Lake Edition. I'm on the HOA, but uh, I'm not speaking on the HOA because we really never had time to have a meeting on it. But uh, one thing, I've been talking to Chris Stevens, and I didn't hear the guy that was uh, speaking about this. Uh, Chris Stevens uh, said that we would have a berm that goes all the way across the back to divide between the, the houses and the uh, uh, duplexes and then have an emergency gate. And uh, I just want to make sure that's still what the plan is on that. And that's my only question right now. Any questions, Mr. Tillman? Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else personal want to speak on this item? Anybody else? Mr. Myers, you got two minutes to rebuttal. Afternoon, Phil Meyer. Um, so we are doing on residential um, to residential. So I'll answer two things. One, Mr. Jones just brought up from the Blue Lake. Yes, Chris Stevens, the developer, in his negotiations with the HOA has been talking about creating a buffer between the single family and the duplex and the development that's there. Um, and that was part of the negotiation to take the ground out of the HOA. So there is a conversation of doing that. Uh, the ironic part is, is, as I tell you, yeah, he's talking about doing that in his negotiations with the HOA. Um, for Mr. Hample's request, you know, I've got residential zoning and maybe duplex, but it's residential zoning. And we typically don't buffer between duplex and single family zoning, which is like is single family. So I don't really want to start the precedence of having to build fences or walls to buffer residential from residential. Um, we do have residential zoning to the north in our Blue Lake that's there now. And although it's zoned industrial, that loop street that sits south of the lake is really developed residentially. Um, sporadically, but developed residentially. So there's already some residences in the area. Um, with that, so I would like it approved today without a requirement to buffer to the single family zoning to the east, which is the lake, and then to answer the homeowners association. Um, the negotiations are still going on between the developer and the HOA, but yes, he's going to do a buffer with Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Myers? Seeing none, bring it back to the commission. It's a pleasure the board. I move for approval, subject to staff comments. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Hartman, second by Mr. Green. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carries unanimously. Next item, zoning case 2021 <coughs> Zoning change from F, <coughs> S at F20 to MF18. We got Kathy again. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not get carried away here. Yeah, please. Uh, okay. This is another one that is up by a, con by a, a limited conditional use or time limited conditional use for a, a rock crushing. Uh, as you can see by the 
Ariel, um, this one piece of land right here is county and it's surrounded by city of Wichita. So at some point, um, the property owner developer is going to request um, annexation um, of this land into the city of Wichita. Next, please. Um, and there is a sand pit lake um, on the property, single family residence here, office ware warehousing development uh, to the north. Um, this is the Crystal Lake subdivision, I believe. I don't I have that. I don't have that staff report in my. Okay. Um, I think that's a Crystal Lake single family residential subdivision. As you can see, it's Crystal buffered. Gardens. Crystal Gardens. Bu I'm sorry? Crystal Gardens. Crystal Gardens, thank you. Um, so it's, it's got another um, sand pit, I presume, lake um, that separates the property from their single family residential. Um, across the street is a CUP um, that is zoned limited commercial, but this parcel happens to allow um, duplex. Yes, duplex zoning. Um, next, please. Uh, and as you can see, this is an area of the recommended by the future growth map and the comprehensive community investments plan for residential and employment mix. Next. Uh, this is looking uh, from the street hunters street across from the subject site. This is the house that currently exists at the northeast corner of that uh, parcel. Um, it is platted as one, uh, as one parcel. Um, and then you can see here the, the uh, limited commercial and uh, development. Um, the residence does have a, a brick pier and picket some kind of picket fence. Next, please. Um, this is looking east. Uh, this is the um, pond, the sand pit. Uh, these are the residential structures that are east of the site. Next, please. Uh, this is looking uh, southeast. There is a church uh, in SF5 zoning district uh, located there on the right uh, of the of the photo. Next, please. And then this is again looking uh, northeast. Uh, this is the location uh, where the rock crushing is going on right now, uh, so that that can be developed into residential is what their intent is, I believe. Next, please. Um, and this is looking south on 135th Street. Uh, very wide uh, right of way uh, sidewalks. Um, so staff staff finds evaluates this that the project does meet the the um, community investments plan and would recommend approval to uh, MF eighteen and that because MF eighteen has a limit of how many units can be built per acre. That's going to affect uh, the number of units. They may be duplex units, they may be triplex, but that is going to affect uh, the number of units that will be allowed and also that it will have on site parking. So, with that, I'll answer any questions. Any questions of Kathy? I have a question. Yes, sir. Mr. Hartman. Uh, south of this property, there's a church on that whole corner? Yes. Okay. And on this area you're looking at here, what is that on the southeast corner of that pond there? What are those squares? You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Is that like a spillway through there? Yes, I think so, to connect those two. Two ponds? Yes. Okay. I go to, I don't know that you can see those from the photos I took, Paul. Go forward. 
uh, go to the next one. Okay, so, no, go back. There you go. I think that is a spillway, Mr. Hartman. Okay. Any other questions of Kathy? Thank you, Kathy. Applicant or agent? Afternoon, Phil Meyer with Boffman Company, agent for the applicant. Um, we are requesting the MF-18 zoning on this property. We're requesting that because um, it's a single plat at lot today. The developer's intention is to do some duplexes on the north, northeast portion of this property. We're going to leave it as one single lot with a private road in there. We'll supply the necessary sewer and water to the site. Uh, his development intentions is to develop that um, more senior oriented, very similar to the existing develop single family developments on that is on the other side of the lake there. But if I zoned at TF3, I'd have to plat lots, and we just don't have the room to plat lots. There is some serious amount of drainage that goes through there. I'm aware of that. Um, this case was pulled off today. Mr. Dave Hogan, who's sitting back there, had some questions about drainage. He may or may not come up here. I don't think he's coming up at this point, but I told him I'd be glad to meet with him and we'll explain what's going on and what we're doing. Um, we're really not trying to impact or change the drainage pattern that is there today. and We're actually limited on what we can do on this site based on the drainage that's there. So um, I told him he's welcome to come up here and speak if he still had concerns, but we did offer to meet with him. Also here with me today, I should have mentioned earlier, um, Barry Davis is the right-hand man for the applicant and is familiar and will be doing the construction out here. So if you have any questions for him, he'd be welcome to answer also. But with that, I'll answer any questions you may have. Bill, Bill how do you propose uh, to get access back there to where your the or, plan development is? We're going to use the drive that's there today. Of course, it'll have to be rebuilt, maybe move north a little bit, but we're going to come in at that north drive and go north and turn and go south just a little bit. Okay. It will be a private drive. It'll be like an apartment complex, but they're duplexes. I mean, Mr. McKay. Bill, of the 4.25, four and a half acres, how size is that lake? How much of that lake takes up that four point? Um, I'm going to tell you 40% of that, okay. two, two to 2.3 acres is Thank that you. lake. Any other questions? Mr. Hartman? You, it looks like there's a lagoon on the site right now. So is there the house using the lagoon? Or the, the house is sewer? using the lagoon. We now have sanitary sewer to the north of this property that's serving the um, commercial business, the U-store business up there. That is the applicant, the same owner. Okay. So we can eliminate that lagoon and bring public sewer in to serve this development, along with we have water in a 135th. So we'll have public utilities to the development, and we'll close the lagoon. And do you know what those two squares are there by that spillway? Those were weirs that were constructed by, so Vince Garcia Additions, the name of the plat, his old uh, fire chief, retired fire chiefs. Oh, I should word that. <laughs> with my graying hair, but um, he constructed that years ago. I don't have the details on that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Phil. Anybody else in the chamber want to speak on this item? Anybody else want to speak on this item in the chamber? How about virtual? Anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Anybody virtual? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to commission. I move we approve subject staff comments. Second. Motion by Mr. McKay. Second, Second by Ms. Foster. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, that ends our planning commission meeting, but we got a non public hearing item.
DR 2021-00007. And do we hear this or do we just vote that it? Uh, I'm going to turn to staff and see what our precedent has been in the past. Matt, you've presented these before. I believe we have always heard these in the past, but I'm not sure that we have to. Perhaps what we could do is an abbreviated presentation and just see if you have any questions. Yeah, that'd work. Let's do it that way. Okay, well, I have Mark oh. Elder. I'm sorry. Uh, you will be asked to approve a resolution, so I would recommend hearing the items. Okay. All right, well, Matt Williams with uh, planning staff. Today we've got Mark Elder here with Economic Development to discuss the Phase 1 project plan for the ICT-21 Redevelopment District and then I'll be up afterwards to talk about the conformance with the comprehensive plan. Good afternoon. This will be a brief presentation, but um, Mark Elder, I am with the uh, city's economic development staff. Um, <clears throat> this is a uh, consideration of the phase one project plan for the ICT 21 redevelopment district. Uh, it's up north by um, 21st Street and 135. Um, this is the area here. The entire area in the black lines is the ICT-21 redevelopment district. Uh, the kind of whited out area on the right is 135 going that way. The gray line going through is 21st Street. So you can see there's property north of 21st and south of 21st Street. The project area is in those three sections labeled 1, 2, and 3, uh, which is where the uh, TIF project plan is being considered for uh, the use of TIF financing to finance the infrastructure improvements within there. Um, th this area was formerly the El Paso refinery site. Um, it's been demolished by I think for over about 15 years now sitting and waiting for something to occur. The overall development will be about a million square feet of new construction uh, that include warehousing, manufacturing, industrial and transit facilities uh, and some potential retail along 21st Street. Uh, the developer will also be participating in the Wichita's Spec Industrial Warehouse Program for some of the warehouses they'll be building within this development. Um, <clears throat> preliminary site plan that uh, they, they have with uh, um, the potential layout for that as they go through development and, and seek tenants, this may change, but this is uh, the site plan as today. Uh, <clears throat> and the proposal for the use of tax increment financing for this project would include uh, infrastructure within that site to uh, serve the development uh, as well. Uh, there will be TIF bonded as well as there would be some uh, site preparation costs that could be reimbursed if there is uh, additional TIF revenues above and beyond what's required to pay those uh, TIF debt services uh, as well as um, traffic signalization along 21st Street um, as needed for uh, if there's increased traffic then uh, engineer will review that and consider the additional traffic signals. And that's it for my part of the presentation. I would stand for any questions now or after Matt's presentation. So. Mr. Green. Yeah, um, how many TIF districts do we have in Wichita now? Do you have any, just roughly? It's roughly 12, 12, 12 to 13, I would say. I don't, I it was just asked that earlier. I was in the middle of trying to f calculate that, but I'd say it's about 12 to 13. And are all those meeting the requirements of providing revenues to, Offset the costs of the uh, public um, improvements. Finance is the one that tracks a lot of that, but my understanding the last time they did um, their budgeting report, they're all projected to, um, they should be meeting those by the end of the expiration. And that has to do with a lot with the finance of, you know, they may not generate as much at the beginning, but by the end they're usually exceeding what the projections are. So, And then is it the responsibility of the of the landowners to pay those taxes uh, correct I mean they to them they pay them just as they would any other uh, taxes and then they just the county is the one that distributes those separately to are, the city are they the allowed fund. to protest the, um, the assessed <clears throat> value of their properties I, um, it's a, that's a good question so um, the way that works I mean they there historically was an expectation that they would not um, we now have in our agreements that the developers that control the property, uh, there's some sort of guarantee whether it's not to protest the property or that they would guarantee the TIF revenues to pay that. We have shortfall guarantees that are structured depending on the project to protect the city if something like that does occur. Um, so. 
And if they default on their... That goes back to the guarantees that are in place to protect uh, those bonds or the, um, yeah, the debts. So, all right. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Can we bring it back to the board? Yep, I've got a few things. Oh. So uh, today we're basically deciding whether this is in conformance with the comprehensive plan. Uh, it's the opinion of staff that this is in conformance with the comprehensive plan. The plan identifies the subject site as appropriate for industrial uses, commercial uses, and new employment, all of which are uh, components of the ICT-21 district. Uh, the project is also infill within the established central area, a priority of our comprehensive plan. So staff recommends the Planning Commission pass the resolution finding the proposed Phase 1 project plan within the ICT-21 <clears throat> redevelopment district to be substantially consistent with the adopted Wichita Sojikwani master plan or comprehensive plan. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, staff? Much pleasure. Move we take the recommended action. Second. Got a motion approved by Mr. Green. Second by Mr. Duell. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? With that, I, there's no one in the business, correct? Oh, there is. There is uh, one, one brief announcement, sir. I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, yesterday the city council, I mean, not city council, the county commission took action to uh, approve a resolution that Shane Gross had resigned, has resigned from the MAPC. I hope that wasn't because uh, we put her on subdivision chair. <laughs> that may have been a factor. I, I don't know, <laughs> but just kidding. Mr. Green's fault. <laughs> she said she wanted to do it. Say it. Right. We adjourn.